96, 97, and I caught a violation in 98 in a place I shouldn't have been at one of my homeboys. That's back when I was serving dope and all that stuff. And got caught up in a raid, went back to the penitentiary, got back out, and now I'm just trying to do what I got to do to survive. Jail is like a spinoff of the streets. You know, only thing about it is, is you don't have your freedom. You know what I'm saying? And, and you got to do what them motherfuckers tell you to do. You got to eat, sleep, and shit when they tell you to. Yeah, I did like, uh, I did like nine and a half, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Starting in Solidad with the folks from Pelican Bay. You know, I was up there in the riots. You know, uh, Monster Cody is the type of brother, you know what I'm saying? You look at, uh, you see, uh, uh, a gang member come from the streets, he's going to the pen to make a transition, you know, uh, he's going to write books about him, um, you know, to show how, how deep this shit and real this shit is, you know. Run across each other in a hole in the solid, Dad. You know, was that like, what, 91, 92? Uh, you know, I've been hearing a lot about this change he went through, he was going through, you know, for us pushing this, you know what I'm saying, pro-Africanism, you know, that's all cool. Uh, I look at it like, you know what I'm saying, he, he, just because we're criminals, they don't, they don't think we know our rights and you know what, and what you know what I'm saying, the society is trying to do to us, you know what I'm saying, as black people, you know, but, you know, uh, he made the transition and, and showed everybody that, you know what I'm saying, he's, you know what I'm saying, he's very intelligent and articulate, you know what I'm saying, man, you know what I'm saying, you know, he's telling you like it is, you know, if you don't like to hear it, you know what I'm saying, it's, you know, like you heard it before, Martin Luther King said it, Malcolm X said it, you know, uh, Mahandi Gandhi said it, you know, so he's saying you the same thing they were saying. But they won't look at him like, you know what I'm saying, he used to public enemy number one or something. You know, but everybody fears the truth, you know what I'm saying, when it's coming at you, raw, and, you know what I'm saying, and, and uh, uh, just rawing up in your face. Of course, I was in Pelican Bay. Pelican Bay is a level five institution located on the Oregon border. 15 minutes from Oregon, you know. 60% of the people there are from, Cali um, from Los Angeles, but they have us way up north. I had an indeterminate shoe term. I was locked in um, solitary confinement for five years. I spent five years there. I came out one hour a day, sometimes 90 minutes, depending on how I felt. Um, it was there I began to work on Monster, the book, and I didn't, I, I didn't really anticipate any response. Actually, I was actually bleeding. Feeling like, you know, this was the exorcism, you know what I'm saying, getting off my chest, some shit I did to the black community and felt awkward about coming to my consciousness. So I wrote it there, you know. Illuminati is the illuminated few. It means control. We have been duped into believing that we have been citizens of this country, not only new Africans, but Americans. There is no country. America is not a country, it's an empire. And inside of it, just like Rome, there are several nations and nationalities, those willing to break free if they could. But the Illuminati has such a hold on us. As a consequence of economics, we become a consumer society. And capitalism has ripped and torn apart nations and created tears and got us eating at flea markets and swap meets. And y'all think that shit is real. Have people come up to another level than where we at already. I'm already unstable. I just need some yak and a blunt. I can get off. Give me a pistol and I'm gone. <laughs> but sure, as long as they got banks open, we had money. They good, real motherfuckers. And they can withdraw in a minute. But they have some motherfuckers. All this shit. When I had this shit last time, fool. Well, it's far gone, motherfucker. Give it. I'm a real dude. You know, I ain't trying to put on no airs. I made a little money, 850000 That ain't shit. For sure. May seem like a lot. But when it's tax free, come out of the bank, that's a lot of money. But when you fuck with some legal shit, that ain't shit. Uncle Sam was like this far up in my pocket, yo. Look, I'm a thug motherfucker. Ain't never had a job. All of a sudden I write this book, boom, book blow up. Pay a motherfucker. Riches. Real shit. Y'all niggas ain't knowing. I'm telling you, real shit. Money. Cars, fresh ass boots, all that old shit. Jewelry, thug shit. Book blew up. All the motherfuckers came. People Magazine, Esquire, LA Times, New York Times, The Globe. 
Boston. Oh man, Washington Post. Motherfuckers was on me, the New Yorker. First, what they want to know, did you really write this book? How could an uneducated motherfucker dropping out of sixth grade go to prison? We have set you up for failure, period. You do not breathe, period. You're gonna go to prison, juvenile hall, camp, youth authority, prison. You're gonna join a prison gang, you're gonna either get stabbed, you're gonna stab people, you're gonna spend the rest of your fucking life in solitary confinement. You are finished, Cody Scott. And I said, no. Nah. Fuck no. Hell no. I ain't finished, yo. Got a spirit of a thug in me. And not just no regular, ordinary thug. I don't know, like Sin Q. Motherfuckers rebelling against the system. And that's thug shit. Boom. They wheeled me out, chained me up, dressed me up, sent me in front of these motherfucking cameras. And Whitey was like feeding on a motherfucker. Because it was the first time that a real motherfucker spoke from the heart. Florence and Normandy, Monster Cody. A Trey Gangsters on the real. Real thug motherfuckers. Motherfuckers want to be like us. All over this motherfucker. And I ain't proud of this shit. We did it. That's fucked up. Now it's time to make amends. What we're saying now is this. Period. The book blew up. It was necessary, but it wasn't sufficient. We got to drop more. We got to do more. Because that's only print. And black people, unfortunately, do not read. Me no questions, I tell you no lie. We're making that okay, squirrel on both coasts, so ride and get high. We got, got what you need, be it weed, tweed, or speed. So break down the bud, man, and separate them seeds. Do that in the evil men and have a desire to run with them. Can't trust their eyes, he lying with silent. Or be pulling that violence. He always talking about separate and calamity. The police be coming and jamming me. Because this is the capitalist society. The main pursuit is after the almighty dollar. The dollar is the uh, main source of being, health, and prosperity in this society because dollars come first. So the man or the woman, they, they become secondary in the equation in this society. So what they try to do is try to either get the money or try to out-equate the money. And as a consequence of that, they become criminals. Criminality, man, and, um, and, and the different classes and things that it creates, the haves and the have-nots. Some of us have not, and those who have, we try to get what they've got by any means necessary. Because we take what Malcolm said literally, without analyzing what Malcolm really meant. And a lot of times, man, shit just happens, man. You know, we develop like that. The point is, we're under attack. And we try to do whatever we can, man, outside of the workforce, outside of the capitalist grind, to do what we can on the underground. And that's, that's the black market, man. They call it the black market, we call it the underground. We call it the grind, we call it the hustle, whatever you call it, is that you get your money outside of the system. You ain't paying taxes. You, you are at odds ominously with the system. You know what I'm saying? You're outlaw. And that's what we consider ourselves, man, outlaws. Regardless, man, what we do illegally or illegally, we just don't click with the system. You're going to be out here in the streets in this game, you're going to be tripping off this, this money. That's what it's all about. That's what we all out here, folks. That's why we all run these streets. All after that one thing. Red and blue, you know what I'm saying? Orange, whatever you want to have it, you know what I'm saying? And focus on one thing. You know what I'm saying? It's green. You know what I'm saying? It's green, you know what I'm saying? The Benjamins. That's what it's all about these days. And if you can't do that, you know what I'm saying? You're all going to go down. Motherfucker, get your shit right. It's about money. Anything you into, it's about money. You can break it down as many times as you want to. You want a life, you want this, you want that. What it take? Money. Everything is about money. The next five years, nigga, I'm gonna be making millions, nigga. I ain't gonna be doing none of this shit no more. Because it's like, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, basically, we out here killing for free. We killing for free like a motherfucker. I'm gonna have to show my son, or so I have my daughter, how to get money. You wear snakes and suckers, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's like, once that didn't happen, I'm gonna have to do that. But I'm gonna have to keep shooting them loves to get your money. I said, I ain't even with all that old foolishness no more. You know, I'm out here making my money, you know? I'm out here getting loot, you know what I'm saying? That's all I'm doing. I'm out here making cash, you know, on a regular basis, you know what I'm saying? That's all I'm out here, bro. That's all I do is make loot in the hood. All day, homie, that's all I do. I, I love it, I love it, I love it. You know, and uh, I'm with a gang of homies. We all kicking it, we all chilling. So I see an enemy that I knew. Caught him at the liquor store in the parking lot. 
hopping in this car. So I go get him. I'm mashing, but I ain't got no heat. The homies got some heat, but they way, they far away. So I go, I, I mash him like, nigga, what's that? Nigga, what that Hoover like, nigga? You know? And oh, oh nigga, it's raining. It's raining. Okay. So I, I sock him. He hopping in this car, but I'm hitting him while he in this car. You know? He mashes off. He hops in his car. He rolls his window up and he and he and he and he just does a U-turn and then spins out and go into the street. I'm telling you, motherfucker, bring your ass back. Let's finish this, nigga. Let's chunk them like two G's. Do it, nigga. In the middle of the street. I'm gonna give a fuck. Oh, but no, he had to go pull his gun out. And when I seen him, he pulled his gun out and he shot four times. I got hit twice. You know what I'm saying? For being stupid. But I didn't care. If I was going to die that night, I was going to die. For representing my flag. My gang. The niggas that I feel that, that, that I got love for, that got love for me. Her brothers came, beat BB up at 860. He broke his rear, threw him in the trash can. Homie still defended. We got to fight Friday. After school, we got to fight. You know how it is. They went on the side of Hobart Friday, homies. Head up. That's what we usually do. Them is our tight. Sixties is our dogs. We ain't tripping. Head up. Handle that beef, squash it, step on. Fatty started fighting with uh, Tyrone. Tyrone's brother was Big Rick, OG60, rider, moneymaker, hustler, thug motherfucker. Him and Fatty fight. Boom, bat, boom, both dick youngsters. Boom, bat, boom, bat, 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 boom. Squalling. Fool named Daryl Oaks, the hood just recruited. He was really from 9-0. Went around the corner, got the strap. The homie came back. He was on the hood like two days. He thought it was something more serious than just the fisticuffs. And that's all it was. And it's 79. Who this is the 70s. It's September, 79. Man, it's still the 70s. It's all about this, fool. Fool come back with the heat. Tell Fatty move, dump, boom, boom. Kill Tyrone, shoot him in the head and the chest. Shoot Bogart, boom, from the 60s in the stomach. Rest of them break. We all break too, We're like, damn! Man, what you tripping on? 60s coming to the hood though. Big Rick, the OG, baby face. Baby Huey, motor mouse, 60s, OGs, killers. Coming to the hood. All they wanted to shoot her, kill their brother. They ain't tripping. Like, man, we want the motherfucker to kill my brother. So Big Rick said. And we was like, man, we, ain't, we don't know him. We didn't. He just started claiming the hood in two days. We couldn't give him up. We didn't know the motherfucker. Fools them took it as a sign of us saying we ain't giving him up. We threw a big meeting, big sidewinder, big Keystone, all in from the 60s, big Joe Rat, Mumbles, Mumpy. Threw a big meeting at the park. The meeting became a big gang fight. It, um, it, it um, fell into um, name calling, disrespect. People started getting hit, bombed on. It turned a big gang fight. Pigs came, helicopter 40 feet off the ground, ran everybody off. From that point, September 27, 1979, the Rolling Sixties and the Eight Trades have been mortal enemies. They've killed um, over 20 of my homies, and we've killed over, I'm sure, 27, 28, 9 of them. Black men, young men, unfortunately, um, just been getting cut down this war since September 27th, 29th, 79, man. And, um, it's hectic. I've been shot seven times. I've been shot six times by rolling 60s. Six times at once. One time I was robbing a man, was shot. The war's taking a toll. Every criminal act I've committed has been in commission in trying to destroy in some aspect of rolling 60s. Crip organization, and um, my whole life has been spent primarily on that mission. Today, even now, I consider myself a rolling 60 killer. Fuck, how much money I got, or whatever. Dude shot me six times, killed 20 of my homies. Motherfuckers I knew, you know what I'm saying? I grew up with, played Pop Warner with. My mothers knew they mothers. Broken houses with these motherfuckers. Roll bicycles, swim. Nigga, not no red lines, no mongoose, nigga. Swins, huffies. Nigga, I roll huffies with these motherfuckers. Street king skates. Not no motherfucking big rubber wheels, nigga. Street kings. 
Nigga, I'm 34. I was born in 63. Not 73. I've been around, man, with the school, man. Graduated in 75. Went to the seventh grade. And that was it. My fuck had to represent. From that point forward, I've been in war with not only motherfuckers around me, but with my own motherfucking self. Because I'm really a nice guy. And I don't like killing motherfuckers. But people around me tend to fall on sharp shit. They tend to, they tend to get holes in their chest. They tend to just get eruptions of the heart and aneurysms and just eternal bleeding. Motherfuckers be around me and I don't know. Motherfuckers be falling around. Damn, I'll be like, damn, nigga, get up. And they think I shot him or something. I don't know what. I got a daughter. She's 17. She's pregnant. I'll be a grandfather this year. My daughter, I started seeing gang writing in the room on her PG folder, ETG this. I hit her up, you know, what's, the, what's this? Well, daddy, you got it on your neck. It can't be too bad. And I was so embarrassed at that point, you know, because my daughter was that, she was like 12, 11 or 12. And I didn't know what to tell her. But see, I got it on my neck, you know, I wasn't smart. You know what I'm saying? Unlike you, I didn't have someone to tell me that it wasn't cool because I didn't have nothing else to believe in. You know what I'm saying? So what I tried to do with her, my daughter and did a pretty good job, was restoring her some culture, some sense of herself as an African woman, and primarily a new African woman. You know, someone who could rely on a culture and a sense of culture that is out of control. Television, violence, drugs, you know what I'm saying? The whole scheme of things that, you know, children tend to take in, and if all that is antagonistic to their original culture, they're going to grow up whack. They're going to grow up into a situation where they're going to be violent. They're going to be despondent. They're not going to uh, go with what is considered normal in this culture. And sometimes it's not normal for us as black people. And we got to understand that. A lot of times we are being misled by a dominant culture that has not our best interest at heart. And so for the children, simply I would say, as a parent myself, monitor, please, the children's behavior as much as you can. I came from a broken home. <clears throat> and uh, my pops did the best he could. My mother did the best she could. But it still wasn't enough, you know. They try to teach me to go to school. They try to tell me to go to school, get your education, you know, make something of yourself. But, you know, for me, living a structured life was just, it was just too hard for me. I wanted the easy way out. I wanted to go do some dirt. I wanted to go hang out and get fucked up and faded. Go fuck a hood rat bitch. You know what I'm saying? Get high. Go, go mash on my enemy. You know what I'm saying? It feel good when I go back to the hood and niggas give me love for what I just did. Not knowing that I ain't doing nothing but hurting my own people. So I always kept that side of that side of me from them. When I go home at night, you know what I'm saying? Oh, what you been doing? Oh, why are your eyes red? You been doing something, you know? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I would always tell him, nah, I'm just tired. I've been out all night. I'm just tired. I just want to get some rest. He knew. It got to the point where I had to, he had to know I was from a gang. He knew. But he didn't want to, he had so much love for me that he would, he told me so much and he taught me so much that I grew older and whatever I did, he had to accept it. That's what it's all about. Your family, your loved ones, the ones you love. You know? Them the only ones that matter right now. Because right now, that's all I got is my family. My family is who? You know, I can't get out of this shit. I'm stuck. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be like this forever. We got families at home that love us, that we, but we choose to do this shit here. You know what I'm saying? Now, luckily, somebody was on our ass enough to actually be there. Because when the shit really did hit the fan, mama was the only one there. Or daddy was the only one there. Now, one of these motherfuckers was really, really there. You feel me? Only your niggas that you really, really love to roll with you. Ain't no fear like my mama was in my ass. 
If my daddy would have been here to whoop my ass, you know what I'm saying, I probably would have been here on this crazy yeah. suit. Kids look up to us. There's a lot of kids run around here think you think we the world. You know what I'm saying? And what we don't show them is this. You know what I'm saying? We show them love. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't about just putting it down with the flame, the red all the time with the kids. The kids don't need to really know about this, man. You know what I'm saying? We all got children. We, we do things with our children. We take our children anywhere they need to be. You know what I'm saying? We taking care of our kids just like the average man. This ain't all that same, man. You know, it's another side to it. We got morals. We got integrity. We trying to do things too. You know, we want to make it in life, but it's hard because of this. You know what I'm saying? We was brought up in this. A lot of the, 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 the niggas you see right now is the niggas that was raised from here. We came up as child from this. You know what I'm saying? We was brought into it like it was hereditary. You know, all my family was gang members, so, you know, just, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, natural 